I know I certainly strive to be that first type to brighten the room when I enter. But you know, it's easy to brighten the room when things are going well, but the challenge is when things are not going so well. When we're in the middle of a pandemic, or more to the point, when you're without power, when you're in freezing temperatures, and when there's record snow. How do we then be that person who brightens the room during those difficult times? So in our brief time together today, we're gonna to take a look at four different things, four different areas that we can focus on in order to stay positive. So it's my pleasure to be kicking off the 75th annual conference for TASBO, virtually, but still connected with you to celebrate this momentous occasion. So let's take a look at four things that are gonna impact, make or break, whether or not we can be that positive person who brightens the room. The first, of course, is having a big picture. Secondly, having a good network. Thirdly, communication. Fourthly, positive attitude. All of those come into play. So let's just jump right in and look at big picture. That's really the key. You know, and I love the John Wooden quote. He says uh, something that I think you've heard before. Do not let what you cannot do stop you from doing what you can do. I know that's certainly been a mantra for me during these tough times in this 2020 season, uh, but we all have something that we can do. So I'm gonna ask you to contemplate this question. What can you do? I mean, even as you think about the situations with the weather challenges recently, with the pandemic challenges, there's always something you can do. You know, I remember thinking during the pandemic, okay, I can't go out and eat at restaurants as I'd love to do, but I can certainly drive through the Starbucks and get my iced coffee. You know, I can't go travel like I normally do as a speaker for over what, 20, almost 27 years. I can't do my travel and go to the places that I love to go, but here we are on Zoom, here we are virtually, so I can do that. So there's always something that we can control and that's really uh, the first key. Uh, during our time together, I'm gonna talk about some resources as well. So I'll share some real stories with you. I'm gonna be giving you some real life strategies, but also some resources that you can use uh, following up our time today. That first resource is uh, one that I love, the Strengths Finder 2.0 with Tom Rath, which really allows you to look at what are you good at? You know, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? I think that helps us in challenging times to know where we excel. Uh, certainly there's also been challenges with people losing jobs and, and having to reinvent themselves. And this is a, a great opportunity to use that resource as well. Uh, Start with why with Simon Sinek. I love that book because it helps us look at, you know, what's my real purpose? What's my passion? And, and we're gonna talk a little bit later about rekindling your passion because sometimes when things are, are challenging and difficult, we lose sight of our passion and our purpose. So we're gonna be revisiting that uh, as well. You know, uh, one of my one of the people that asked me during the uh, the difficult pandemic that we've been through, you know, how do you manage to stay positive? How do you manage to uh, stay upbeat? And I always felt like the Helen Keller quote was one of my real um, guiding forces. The quote she says is, "Keep your face to the sunshine, and you cannot see the shadows." And that really just says, can you again look at what are the positives going on? Uh, you know, a little bit more about my background uh, that was not in the introduction. Uh, I grew up as a military brat, and my dad, um, for 26 years, was in the Army. We moved every two to three years. I uh, spent half my childhood outside of the country in Germany, half my childhood in the States. But every two to three years, we'd move. And we had no choice. We had no control. You know, my dad would come home, and he'd announce, we're moving, pack your bags, yet again. And so I learned at a very early age that there were some things I had control over and other things I did not. And I had to figure out, okay, in the big picture, what's gonna make this a good experience? You know, what is it that I, what sunshine can I look at and focus on in order to uh, stay positive? So it occurred to me very early on the importance of focusing on the positive. You know, uh, I uh, spent some time, of course, in the university arena, and I always love speaking to my fellow education colleagues, so this is a, a wonderful opportunity for me, uh, because all you know that uh, there are things that go on even in our work world that we don't have control over. Uh, you know, boards of regents make changes in policies. You know, reorganizations happen on campus. Uh, things happen with students and with staff that we have no say over or no control over. And so I, I know uh, you know 
that uh, there's ways that we have to figure out how to deal with that. So big picture is really the first of the four things that are key. I want to talk a bit now about the second thing, which is having a powerful network, whether that be friends or family, uh, whether that be coworkers. uh, You know, the question I ask is, who's in your network? Uh, The great legendary Jim Rohn, who is the granddaddy of all, he's probably the granddaddy of all motivational speaking. And uh, the late Jim Rohn used to say, you know, the five people you spend the most time with, you become the average of those people. And I remember I was sharing this with a a, a group in person, a a keynote that I was doing, and there might have been maybe 500 people in the room. And I was talking about the five people that you spend the most time with is who you become. And I remember there was a woman all the way in the back in the back row. She goes, Oh Lord. (laughs) And so we talked afterwards and she said, you know, I'm hanging around with some whiners. These people that I associate with are always complaining, always whining. She says, I need to upgrade my class of friends. And so I ask you, do you need an upgrade? Are there some people that you're spending way too much time with that might be bringing you down, uh, might be a negative influence? So take a moment to perhaps jot down who's in your network. Uh, You have the PDF workbook uh, handout, and uh, there's a space for you to write down who is in your network. And you might look at some of those names and go, I need to just cross you off my list. Uh, I I know that, of course, TASBO is a great resource. Sometimes we might be related to people who are negative and we have no control over that, but we can certainly choose to spend our time with people who uplift us, encourage us, and inspire us. And certainly TASBO, uh, your involvement there is a wonderful uh, opportunity to upgrade your network. Again, I have some resources for you. Uh, I love uh, Susan Packard. She was one of the founders of HGTV. And she has a book. It's been out several years. I I really love it. It particularly focuses uh, on women, although I think the men could probably benefit from some of those lessons in the book. But that particular book focuses on women and some of the things that help us work more effectively in the workplace. Uh, And of course, I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown. Uh, She is uh, the queen of vulnerability and how sometimes we have to be able to say to our network, you know, I'm struggling. Um, I need your help. Uh, Here's some things that would be beneficial to me. Are you able to help me? So sometimes we have to reach out and ask that network for help and and let them know that, you know, this is a tough time. Uh, Here's what I need. And and that's a, a powerful thing to be able to do. So, uh, so now having a positive network is key. And you know, the thing that's interesting right now is our network is online. For a lot of us, we're not seeing our, our folks face to face. We're seeing them like this, you know, virtually. Uh, but I think communicating online and communicating virtually still can be a positive experience. And I, I think the uh, African proverb still applies here. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. You know, I I have a whole presentation I do called How How to Maintain High-Touch Relationships in High-Tech Times. And that's a whole conversation in itself because we are truly, uh, especially in recent, in this recent year, now online. Uh, But if I had to sum up that entire presentation, I would sum it up with what I call my wrap-up wrap which is uh, my wrap up when I do that particular presentation. And I'm gonna share that with you right now because I think that sums up all we need to know about communicating online. In fact, I have to say, um, before I share the wrap with you, I I have to to chuckle for a moment because I'm thinking about something my mother used to say uh, when I was growing up. And I have a feeling you all have heard this same phrase. And uh, so I'm gonna just throw a phrase out there and see if you can complete this phrase, would you? My mother used to say, if you can't say something nice, yeah, I I can hear you all saying in unison, don't say anything at all. But you know what I've discovered? It seems like now the kind of scary wisdom is people are saying, if you can't say something nice, post it on Facebook. If you can't say something nice, send an email. So we have gotten sometimes a little snarky and saying certain things online. 
We've sometimes hidden behind the computer and not really done true networking. It's all too easy sometimes to be able to say things online. And sometimes we may just want to pick up the phone. So I'm going to share a little quick wrap with you, which sums up everything that my two cents worth on communicating and networking online. LOL, TMI, OMG, I can't understand what you're saying to me. The magic words are still thank you and please, even if you text or tweet with ease. Bold caps, all these fonts, sometimes are email attitude. And texting while we're talking is just rude. Ditch the email, catch a clue, pick up the phone if something is bothering you. And if you can't say something nice, what do you say? Whatever it is, don't post it on Facebook today. So that sums up my two cents on the network online and communicating online. Certainly there are some times when we may need to just pick up the phone, especially when something is bothering us. So I wanna, I wanna just reiterate that as we talk about having an important network that supports us, encourages us, and inspires us. But let's talk about something that is my favorite thing to talk about. We've talked about the big picture. We've talked about having a positive network, Look, thinking about those five people that we spend time with. I wanna spend a bit of time talking about communication because really, as Tony Robbins would say, the quality of your life is the quality of your communication. And so that's an important, that's an important part of staying positive uh, during these tough times. You know, uh, they say it's, it's great to be able to speak in a way that people love listening to you. And we're gonna probably talk a little bit about that but momentarily. I'll be sharing with you my top 10 positive communication phrases. And we'll be talking about some things we can do to communicate more positively, especially in tough times. However, I think the flip side of that is also important, which is listen in a way that people love speaking to you. Let me tell you more about what I mean. You know, I had a mentor when I was a grad student, she was my first mentor, and she told me something that I think was probably the, probably the best advice I've received as an adult. She says, you know, when you get criticism, there's one thing you should do, and that is ask for more. I was like, what? Somebody criticizes me, asking for more is the last thing I want to do. But isn't it interesting that it's easy to listen when we hear nice things, but a little more difficult to listen when someone is saying something that we don't want to hear. So be careful of what you ask for, you just might get it. Uh, but, my, but my mentor said, ask for more, you know, when you get criticism. And I thought, you know what, that's okay, I'll, I'll file that away as a, as a good to know kind of thing. But it really actually came about after I attended, uh, it came to life really, as I attended a presentation much like this one that you're attending, you're attending virtually, but much like this one, I was at a presentation for folks who worked in universities, in education, uh, and particularly for supervisors. And at that time I was a supervisor in the university arena. And I remember them saying at this presentation, when you go back to your staff and you have your one-on-one -on -one meeting, it would be a great idea to ask for their input. It would be a great idea to ask, you know, what do you think about how we can improve things around here? So I was like, okay. So I went back, first one-on-one -on -one meeting, I asked one of my staff members, I said, what do you think we can do to improve the department? Now, I'm going to tell you what his response was. I remember this was decades ago, but I remember vividly what he said. But I'm going to say it in the way that my evil twin, you know, we have an evil twin who lives over here and here's the, the negative of everything. But my evil twin, I'm going to use that tone of voice. Because when I said to him, what do you think we can do to improve the, the department? He says, well, I think you can be a better boss. What? Eh, eh, warning, warning, red alert, write him up, insubordinate. How dare he say I could be a better boss? And then I remembered, when you get feedback you don't want to hear, when you get criticism, ask for more. So when he said you could be a better boss, I said, okay, um, how do you mean? Now, I could have used any other phrases to ask for more. I could have said, can you be more specific? 
Can you give me an example? Can you elaborate? Uh, tell me more. Those are all great ways of asking for more when you get some negative feedback. So I said, how do you mean? He says, well, Sarita, some of us staff, we, we were talking. You ever notice that nothing good ever follows that statement? We were talking. He says, and we realize we don't know what you think about how we're doing. So I asked again, what do you suggest? He says, well, how about when we have our one-on-one -on -one meetings, you tell us one thing we're doing well and one thing we need to work on. I can do that. And I did. And it was brilliant. But it was not my idea. It was his. And I thought, wow, that really was the power of that advice I'd received those years earlier about asking for more. Listening in a way that people love speaking to you. Because I think you know people that really, when you speak to them, you don't really want to speak to them because you know they're not going to hear you out. And, and certainly we want to be one of those people that, that others feel like they can come to us, share concerns, even if they're not our staff, even if they're colleagues, coworkers, family members, can they come to us and share their concerns and get a positive response. So again, speak in a way that people love listening to you and listen in a way that people love speaking to you. 